Hello my fellow night crawlers, welcome to a brand new video. As usual, grab your blankets and grab your snacks and get comfortable because today we're looking into not anything paranormal nor a true crime case. This is something that actually just seemed a little bit interesting. It's like a mystery, really. We're gonna be diving into an album of all things today. It was limited to 33 copies and hasn't surfaced anywhere online. It's often regarded as one of the most sought after albums ever. And if you're at all in the post-rock scene, then you might actually know what I'm talking about and I haven't even mentioned it yet. This album is by a band named Godspeed You Black Emperor. And the title for the album? All Lights Fracked on the Hairy Amp Drooling. I'm really excited to dive into this one, I'm not gonna lie. Godspeed You Black Emperor in terms of the post-rock scene is probably one of my favorite bands Ever. I highly recommend the band to anyone. There's Lift Your Skinny Fists like Antennas to Heaven, there's F Sharp, A Sharp, Infinity, and there's many other songs, or I guess those are albums, not songs. There's many other albums by them, and they're all wonderful. They're all unique, and they have their own charm to them. But enough of my Godspeed dumping for the day. Let's talk about this album, why it's mysterious, and why it hasn't surfaced yet. In 1994, the birth of Godspeed You Black Emperor had begun. The band actually took its name from a 1976 Japanese black and white documentary. This followed the exploitation of a Japanese biker gang, the Black Emperors. Something that seemed to be very unique about Godspeed You Black Emperor, at least in their early days in terms of getting live music out there, it seems like they would just start pulling random people up on stage and local musicians and artists would actually join in them in these long, slow, drawn out pieces. The only problem was though, is that with the increasing numbers of members coming in and leaving, it actually caused a bit of strain on the group. But it actually began to start leveling out around the release of their first album, F Sharp, A Sharp, Infinity. And from there, the rest of the band really is history. After the release of F Sharp, A Sharp, Infinity in 1997, they went ahead and released six more albums. They actually went on a 10 year hiatus with the release of an album in November of 2002 to then releasing an album in October of 2012. Now, where does this mysterious album come into play? Well, before the release of F Sharp, A Sharp Infinity came All Lights Fracked on the Hairy Amp Drooling. This album was actually published to cassette with a limit of 33 copies. This was in December of 1994. Just to put this into perspective, four years later would F Sharp A Sharp Infinity be released. At the time of this release, the band's lineup only consisted of three members, not the usual like nine that would be on stage. According to the band's members that have actually, you know, played and listened to the album, they say that it doesn't reflect the work that they've done later on. It almost feels as if they're like disappointed with the album in a way. And something that's actually been surprising to a lot of the members in the band is that this album hasn't surfaced at all except in 2013. Before we hop into the 2013 fiasco, and believe me, it gets crazy, I do want to say that there haven't been very many reputable leaks or instances of this album coming out. The main one that everyone seems to refer to is this 2013 Reddit post. Now, if there are other instances of this album potentially surfacing legit ones, not fake ones, feel free to let me know. But from the research that I've done, it only seems like the real deal has appeared in 2013. But now, let's move on to this Reddit post that started a whole fiasco in r slash music. The Reddit story opens up with a now deleted user that went by the name of Casket Jack. He opens up with a title that says, Godspeed you Black Emperor question, dot dot dot. He opens up basically defending his credibility, saying that from 1990 to 1995, he went to this local venue to constantly collect cassettes from local bands, whether that be demos, albums, whatever the case may be. I always went there because I used to collect demo tapes from the local bands of every city I went to. Anyway, I was going through the tapes, wow, cassettes, eh? And I started talking to some guy. If I remember correctly, he told me he wasn't local, but had a tape I should check out. I brought it home and listened to it, didn't really like it, and stashed it away with all the other demos I had picked up. Fast forward to this week, I'm cleaning out my music room closet, and I stumble across my bin of old demos. The tape that I got from the guy in Moncton is sitting on top of the pile. I pull it out and decide to Google the name. Anyway, this is it. 
According to Wikipedia, it was limited to 33 copies and no copies are known to still exist. This is kind of cool. Anyway, I guess I'm just looking for some advice. What would you guys do with it? Understandably, everyone in that thread began freaking out. At that time, people often considered that tape to kind of be like a myth, like an urban legend in a way. People obviously were interested and wanted to know like, oh my gosh, what's in this tape? But there was probably no chance that we're ever gonna get it. So whatever, just toss it, whatever, it doesn't matter. So when someone comes forward claiming that they have this tape, all hands on deck, this is something that they should be taking seriously. Obviously, people think the guy is sketch initially and understandably. Some random dude who probably didn't even have a Reddit history at the time rolls in, claims that he has this super limited tape. They want proof, right? And boy, does Casket Jack provide proof. I've uploaded a few pics of the tape to try and prove I'm telling the truth. I've never used Imgur before, so fingers crossed this works. Oh, and by request, one more pick with my ID to prove I'm legit. This is when people started realizing that this guy wasn't fooling. This guy meant business. If you're at all familiar with piracy in any way, shape, and form, the name what.cd should ring a bell. If you don't know what it is though, I will happily explain. What.cd was a private, invitation-only music BitTorrent tracker. In the What.cd community, that album had actually one of the highest bounties ever. People sought after this album heavily. They were like frothing at the mouth, thirsting over it. After What.cd got shut down in 2016, a lot of people went over to Redacted. In Redacted, that bounty actually still holds the same. It's at rank 3 currently. The first one being a Wu-Tang album, which was only pressed once and it only has a single copy. And the second one being Pro Tools for Mac. But anyway, I kind of pivoted off a little bit from the main subject talking about Redacted and what.cd, but I thought that would be like a cool like bit of side information if that interested you. So Casket Jack has this very rare tape that everyone seems to want. Everyone in that comment thread is frothing at the mouth. Please put this on a proper tape. Get this with the best equipment. Do this, do this. Casket Jack, here's the information on how to rip this to flack so that way we can all die happy. Only problem is though, is that Casket Jack was concerned and weary. He was very preoccupied by the fear of Constellation, the record label, stepping in and potentially suing him or whatever the case may be. He was worried that he was gonna have to deal with some sort of legal trouble. He expressed his weariness and people started basically giving him hell for it. People started to get very frustrated with Casket Jack, started calling him names. They actually started harassing him, sending him pretty hurtful private messages. So this next part, I'm a little confused, at least in terms of the timeline, where things line up specifically. So the timeline might be off by a little bit, but in terms of the information that I'm giving you, it's pretty accurate, at least based on the facts and what definitively happened, just when it might have happened might be a little skewed. Whether before his nervousness started to really set in, or maybe even during his nervousness, he decides to upload a sample of the cassette tape itself. He uploads two of the final tracks on side A of the cassette. The first one being Random Lovely Moncton Blues, and the second one being Dad, Mom, Daddy. Casket Jack's nervousness and overall hesitancy to upload any further music begins to set in. He starts worrying about the legal trouble a lot more and his final update says this. One last update for the time being. I may have been a bit of a dick walking away from this yesterday. For all the people being rude there and a good portion of you who seem to understand the dilemma I find myself in, for that I'm grateful. This is what I've done. I've spoken to a friend who I trust, and he's agreed to sell the cassette on eBay for me. Before it comes to that though, I've also emailed Constellation Records and explained how I came into possession of the cassette. I've also explained that there is a rabid fan base that would like nothing more than me to post my rip of the cassette. I've asked them for permission to do so. I will not auction off the tape or post a rip of it until I hear from them one way or another. Perhaps I should have posted the thing for sale, but I want to do right for my family the band, and for some reason, you guys too. I don't imagine I will get a response from them on the weekend, but I'm hoping to hear back from them soon. 
When I do, you guys will too. And from there, Casket Jack's account was deleted. And this is the last time that the album will ever surface, at least a credible version of the album to surface. Since that event in 2013, there has been no real credible sources coming forward about anything pertaining to the album. And considering the fact that it's down to 33 copies, I doubt that we're gonna have another instance of this for a very long time. But I'm interested in what you have to say about this, ladies and gentlemen. Do you believe the album will eventually surface one day, or will this just kind of be something no one ever hears? ever. Let me know in the comments below. Before we hop in the end segment though, I would like to thank my Tormented Knights and my Knighted Patreons. For my Tormented Knights, we got Levi and Will. For my Knighted Patreons, we got Emma, K. Duckworth, Kira, Lucas, Monkey, Shizen, Teddy, Timo, and TD Darklight. Thank you guys so much. Your support genuinely means a lot. Thank you all. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed the video, why not like and subscribe? It definitely helps me out. If you didn't, why not dislike and let me know what I can improve on for next time? But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you on the next one.